Radiant team. Hey everybody, welcome to the CDL. This is going to be NC State versus George Mason University. It is going to be a best of three. Thanks for joining us here on Neo Dota. I am Mott. I'm really excited to bring you another best of three series for the CDL. A lot of fun tonight. Uh, and it's going to be some good stuff. We're already getting uh, into the band phase real quick. And we're going to see Templar Assassin plus the Batrider band out. Uh, not surprisingly. Um, should be important to note that I cast a GMU the first time around when they played against the University of Toronto. They had three really good games, but unfortunately, GMU was on the end, uh, losing side of that. However, they'll look to rebound here against North Carolina State University. So we're going to get into the band phase, and already, like I said, a few of these, a uh, few of these bands coming out. We're going to see uh, Tide Hunter coming out next for NC State. One more on the side of George Mason, and once we get into this game, I'm, I'm pretty excited, guys. Honestly, I love casting. I've been casting all weekend, and I, I hope you appreciated uh, Much Ado About Dota. It was a really good episode. Of course, they had Brax on as the special guest. And uh, honestly, if I can speak freely, I think it's a lot better than Talk Dota, but that's just my opinion. Five seconds remaining. And uh, it's, in fact, Korok that you do see there on the side of GMU. Brilliant and he is the captain, so he's the one picking for them. And he will ban out the Undying. Oh, Pretty standard bans here, except for the Darkster getting Dia up here for NC State. And Jakira will be the next pickup on the side team pick. of George Mason University. Apparently, Team Oils... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why, but that's pretty funny to me. So, I mean, these are two, you know, two heroes we see all the time. Darkseer, well, not all the time, because Darkseer usually gets banned out. But I think that GMU is okay with Darkseer this time around. They're like, all right, well, you know, you, you know, that's fine. We'll just pick up the heroes that we want to pick up. You know, Jakir on Wisp. Obviously, Jakir on one of the strongest, uh, one of the strongest, I think, supports in the game right now, if not the strongest support in the game. And, of course, Wisp as well with that ganking ability. So, um, not to keep that in mind. And uh, hopefully we'll get into the next uh, few picks here in just a moment. I always appreciate quick pick band phases. Uh, then again, if there's long ones, it allows me to sort of Five showcase my theory crafting ability, which is minimal at best. <laughs> As you notice, I don't have a co-caster with me here tonight, but that's fine. I enjoy co uh, solo casting, especially for the CDL games. A lot of fun. Also, there's some VODs, uh, of course, for the previous CDL games. I believe there's a VOD for the GMU game against uh, University of Toronto up on Neo Dota's YouTube, so you can check that out if you want to see. Well, how did uh, GMU do in the first round? So, um, also, there's a bunch of VODs coming up from what I did this weekend, which was um, the University of Waterloo Gamers Land Final, which was a lot of fun, a lot of best of threes, a lot of best of fives. It was a lot of... A lot of enjoyable games there. Reserve time. Sven Disruptor. is going to be the pickup as well as Disruptor here for the side of Dia NC State. Team. And that's scary. Of course, Sven, as you heard in the broadcast Bounty on that, they talk about how he's such a strong hero and how he's going Radiant to be really, team. really yeah. difficult to deal with. And uh, with Disruptor as well, that's kind of frustrating. So uh, I expect to see a trial with Sven and Disruptor, of course, Darks here in that offlane solo. And Bounty Hunter will be the pickup for GMU. And this is another strong offlaner here, uh, solo offlaner. Bounty Hunter with the track hold is I've seen a lot of big comebacks this week uh, alone with Bounty Hunter, whether it be the UWG Land Finals, things of that nature, SECS included. So Bounty Hunter, very, very strong pickup for the side of George Mason. Um, but ah, Sven and Disruptor are kind of scary. And that's going to make it difficult that Kinetic Field and Static Storm are going to make it really difficult for Jakiro and Wisp to get those positionings. However, with Wisp, it's kind of difficult because Wisp will be sort of TPing around all over the place. The thing is, with a TP coming in from Wisp, you can you can just glimpse one of them back as soon as they TP in onto the Disruptor, and that sort of just completely nullifies at least one aspect of the gank. Um, and so we were going to see a tiny oh. ban out here from NC State as well as the Juggernaut. Oh. Um, I think uh, if they decide to go for anything here with Wisp, it'll probably be Chaos Knight. I would not be surprised to see that at all. Um, but we still have some time here. We're getting to the next ban phase. Windrunner is banned out, and Voker is banned out on the side of George Mason. And one more band for each team here real quick. I hope the uh, stream is up right now. I think uh, we added a delay. So I hope you guys go are going to enjoy the broadcast tonight. A lot of stuff happening here on Neo Dota, which is very exciting, by the way. All right, good. We're in the game, it looks like. Ten seconds remaining. And we're going to get into some Five reserve time, it looks like, for this last ban here. Reserve time. 
And it will be a Rubik band. Not surprisingly, Dial a hero that's team. still very strong, <laughs> whether it's played in the mid lane or as a support. Final Radiant band coming out will be the Queen of Pain. So a lot of mid heroes getting banned out here for the side of GMU. And that's a good idea because you don't have any mid heroes up on the side of NC State. You've got two, you've got an off laner, a support, and a carry. So you're going to look for, you know, ban the melee, uh, or excuse me, the mid lane heroes here like the Queen of Pain, like the Invoker, like the Batrider even. And meanwhile, Templar Assassin and Rubik being banned out by NC State. So they have a lot of, they don't have too many choices here uh, as far as mid hero. So we'll have to see what they decide to go. Um, Five I'm not really sure, honestly. We'll have to see in just a few moments what they decide to pick up. Zeus is still available. Zeus Death Prophet we see a lot with the pushing lineup where you've got Krybulus pop that exorcism. And uh, we'll see how that works out. And we got 37 seconds left here on the reserve time for NC State. Venomancer. And they're going to pick up the Venomancer. So their supports are all Don't done right now. Pick. And uh, still, Venomancer is still a very strong support. Venomous scale, nice slow early on. And of course, the ward's really great for pushing. Um, so that that will be the tri lane, I think. Sven, Disruptor, and Venomancer. So that'll be a little bit of a quick, you know, early aggression from them. Of course, Stormhammer with a nice setup stun into whatever else you might do. So one more pickup here on the side of GMU. Uh, I'm not sure what Clanks. it will be, and it's going to be Clanks. Interesting pick up there. That's Radiant going to be, uh, I think Falls played it last time around when they did pick it up. So, might see Falls be on that Clinks there. Uh, the thing was, we actually saw Falls on the uh, solo long lane Clinks. Um, so, Bounty Hunter might go in a different lane, or Clinks could be going mid here, or he could be used as the hard carry in a tri lane. We'll have to see. But it's pretty standard that Jakiro and Wisp will be together in a tri lane, whether Clinks is there or not. I'm not as sure right now. I think they could use another mid hero here, but they Ten could also send Clinks or Bounty Hunter there. See that occasionally happen. Not really sure, though. We Five still have a lot of time to figure Five this out. Seconds remaining. And uh, going to get into the reserve time once reserve again for time. NC State, real quick. I believe NC State's in the SEC in terms of like, like football conference or whatever. George Mason, I th have no idea. I think they're in the big, big East for basketball. My sports knowledge is not up to par right now. Well, whatever. What are you going to do? Storm Spirit, Storm Spirit is the next pickup for NCSU, so that will be the mid-hero for them. And uh, kind of a little bit of a surprise. You usually see heroes like Death Prophet or even Zeus be picked up over him. But I've seen him like two or three times in the last few games. I saw him in the land finals and I saw it played really well. It does a lot of damage, gets that Orchid up quickly, and it could be absolutely devastating for the opposing team. So we'll have to see what we see from GMU here real quick. I don't know if they're going to pick a mid hero. I would not be surprised to see that. Uh, they're going to pick the Chaos Knight, though. So they will go for that Chaos Knight Wisp combo. So it looks like it'll be uh, maybe Bounty Hunter in the offlane, Clink's mid, Jakira Wisp. Chaos Knight tri lane or switch the bounty hunter to McClinks. Not really sure what they're going to try to do though. They could even go for a dual mid here with Chaos Knight and another hero. I'm not really sure, but we will jump into the game. I just realized that my mic is not on. Let me fix that. And uh, so here we are on the side of North Carolina State University. We will see Justin on the Disruptor. Fear. Not, I don't think that's the, the actual fear from EG, but Fear will be on the Venomancer. Oxmox will be on the Darkseer. Rice, Rice, Rice will be on the Sven. And Baron Von Schusch will be on the Storm Spirit. Meanwhile, on the side of George Mason University, we'll see Austin on the Clinks. We're going to see Buell on the Bounty Hunter. O Oils will be on the Jakiro. We're going to see Korok on the Wisp. And finally, Falls will be on the Chaos Knight. So Korok playing a support role, surprisingly. Uh, very interesting pickup there. But it looks like we will see up here a tri lane with Falls, with Korok, and of course with Oils here. So Jakira, Wisp, and the Chaos Knight. And a tri lane mid will be that Clinks. And of course, in the off lane, it will be the Bounty Hunter. Not too much tankiness here. And it might be difficult for the last hits for Clinks. He's actually very squishy as well. He'll do a lot of damage, but against uh, NCSU's uh, Baron, it could be kind of difficult. So Storm Spirit's going to go mid. Down to the bottom lane, we will see Fear. As well as the Disruptor, and it looks like we're going to see Rice, Rice, Rice head down into Choiva, into that tri lane as well. Meanwhile, top lane, we will see Darkseer in that solo off lane right now. So, pretty typical stuff. We're going to get a pause real quick from Storm Spirit. And, uh, yeah. One AFK, this is Baron. So, we'll hold on for just a minute. Looks like we have some uh, wards here from Jakiro. Put them up here, probably over the rune spot here. Same with uh, Oxmox. He'll probably try to ward the camp here, but we do see Korok on his wisp, which apparently disappeared for me. 
falls on the Chaos Knight, going for what looks to be a quick bracer, probably into those drums of endurance. I'm sure we'll see that eventually. Austin, I'm going to be going for a Wraith Band, maybe into Aquila. We'll have to see. Fiend Field. At Fiend Field. I'm just going to call him Fina. Bounty Hunter going with uh, Stout Shield early on. Three GG branches, uh, everything pretty standard for there. Meanwhile, on the side of Fear, going to win with the Sentry Wards. Nice job there to pick those Sentry Wards up against this banner. That could be really important to try to get a quick kill early on. If you don't pick those up, and we're going to even see Justin picking them up as well. So that's pretty important. There's no Observer Wards, though, on these any of these guys. Does uh, Storm Spirit have any is the question. And it doesn't look like it does. So we have two sets of Sentries. No Observer Wards on the side of NCSU right now, but the Observer Wards up here in the top lane will be from Oxmox, so he will put it up here on this rune spot. That's going to be a nice rune positioning, uh, excuse me, ward positioning for that rune. And Korok's looking like he might counter ward this himself. In fact, he will do so. So already, Korok trying to take out this ward here, and there's not much they'll be able to do to stop this. So uh, a little bit of wasted uh, time and money there for that Observer Ward, but it doesn't matter. And Ox actually... Checking out there is this Observer Ward in lane. Nice ward placement there. That's going to give them a lot of vision. That's going to be very important. We'll have to see that uh, how that works out later on. Meanwhile, in the jungle, we'll have that uh, nice little placement here from the Darkseer. Throw up my last hit tab here real quick in the bottom lane. It's going to be... He's going to have to be careful here. There is a Sentry Ward. Uh, already doing some damage there. We'll go for the Venomous Gale. Will it be enough for First Blood is the question. Is Stormhammer going to fly? Well, there's the Kinetic Field. How did that miss? How did the Stormhammer miss? He's still taking a bit of damage. He's still getting slowed. Will he go down? He's very close to it. And they're going to back off. So he's going to somehow survive. That won't be first blood, but it's very close. And now he's got to be careful. He knows that Sentry Ward is available. They threw down two of them just to try to get that kill. And that's going to be some uh, time wasted for them. But it doesn't matter. He's going to actually go back in the lane surprisingly. I would have backed off if I were him. Uh, and that Stormhammer not doing any damage is really surprising. Uh, Austin trying to get some last hits here in the mid lane. Got five already. Actually doing very well for himself. And Baron has uh, got four. So okay job for him. Chaos Knight at four right now. We'll have to check the graphs later on, of course. I don't want to make I, you know, I don't want to check anything too quickly here Korok with the uh, sentry ward will counter this observer ward here making it so that this creep camp is not blocked anymore and that's very important if you're going to go for pulls you can pull into here and then of course pull from that camp into this camp and uh, you know something like that could be very important and Oxbox is going to throw up his iron shell which is level one right now and it's going to be annoying but uh, we'll have to see how that works out later can get any last hits there. Already light, or a lot of right click from Austin here, doing a lot of damage to Baron. He's going to have to pop his salve here. And mid lane. Seven for Clinks right now. Five for the Storm Spirit. Everything going uh, pretty okay. Bounty Hunter hasn't been aggressed too much after that uh, first uh, sort of aggression from his team on the, on the side of NCSU. Looks like Bracer will be the choice for the side of Sven. Shadow's happening. Even from Korok, they happen. Uh, Chaos Bolt. And falls one a bit, but not so. Looks like uh, last hit's going okay for Falls here. Similarly, Austin trying to get some more of his own. Going for what looks to be a Wraith Ban. He's going to finish that off real quick. Justin here at about half health somehow, taking a little bit of damage. Uh, I don't know if it was from Fina or not, but yeah, he's going to have to back off here. He's staying behind. You see the Thunder Strike going on him right now, and that's going to do a bit of damage, but it's, I think it's only level 1, so it's not too aggressive there. You see the dis uh, disruption, Disruptor, excuse me. Level 1 Thunder Strike, not a big deal, so only doing a little bit of damage. DD Rune on the Clinks, and now I think Baron will have to be a little bit careful here. Mid lane could be a problem for him. Level 4 right now, looking at the levels, him and Clinks, both level 4. Not a whole lot of aggression coming out too early. 3 on 5 in the game time. Uh, and everything going pretty, you know, pretty standard right now. Nothing too crazy happening. Rice, Rice, Rice taking a bit of tower damage. He'll back off going for actually one point into Cleave early on. Surprising. You usually see that Stormhammer and the Warcry get maxed out. Not that it matters, though. Cleave's still very good early on. So definitely not a mistake, but uh, could work out well for him. And Falls here. Still trying to get some farms. Still trying to get that Brace Trap. He's actually got 900 gold in the bank. We see a Courier. The Frog Courier, even. Fearing that Ring of a Kill. Two Clinks right now. Not going for the bottle just yet. Finishing out that Ring of a Killer first. And a lot of right click damage. You see the Searing Arrows. It's very frustrating for that Storm Spirit, who is pretty squishy, honestly. And pull happening from Fear down here on the bottom lane. Rest, rest, rest. Taking a bit of damage. He's got two salves on him. Gloves of Haste will be finished up just right now. Is he going to go for something like a Midas? That would be kind of ridiculous. I don't think that's going to be the case, but, well, you know, you never know. I think that's part of his uh, treads, but I'm not sure. 
Uh, so if you're trying to roam around, he's going to put maybe a sentry down here up um, in this spot. We usually see it right in the trees here. It's a good, good spot for that sentry, but uh, he's going to actually back off. He sees that the Invis rune is there in the bottom rune spot. And Baron, getting, uh, he's got his bottle now. It's going to be pretty important for him. What he'll build first, I'm not really sure as far as the big items goes. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Sven with 20 last hits right now. He is eclipsing everybody. 19 on the clink, so he's not too far behind. I want to look at the net worth real quick. Uh, Sven is leading the way, but not by much. Meanwhile, CK here. Wisp. There's going to be an engagement. Three seconds stunned on Ox Mox. They're going to uh, chain it up here with the ice path, but will it be enough? He's going to surge. Nice body block from Falls. There's the reality rift. One more right click should do the job. One more. Just need one more. And in fact, it will go. First blood going for the Jakiro. Nice job with that dual breath. But now Korok is actually going to tether all the way across to the Jakiro. He's still going to take the tower hit, and he will go down, so he's going to get killed by the Radiant. Oh, Korok, nice try there. Nice try. Austin doing some right click onto Baron. Once again, I am Mott. Thanks for joining us here. Another CDL game. This one between George Mason University and NC State. Fina with his boots up. So he's doing an okay job. He's got, you know, he's got a few less hits. Ten even. Somehow in this tri lane, they're not killing him. And they need to be a little bit more aggressive. And it's just not working out for him. So good job by GMU to get this uh, Bounty Hunter a little bit of farm. Thunderstrike just doing a bit of damage, but that's not going to do too much. He's fine. He's like, ah, whatever. It's not, it's whatever. It's not even that much damage. And in fact, it will be his treads. I thought it was like Midas on Sven. I don't know about that. Meanwhile, mid, we actually have a gank here coming in from Korok. Somehow, Baron will just barely survive. He'll back right off. Pop up a bottle charge there and maybe head back to base. No, not so. He's actually going to wait for the rune, I believe, which is at six minutes. Uh, they have some nice wards here. Dyer having the high ground ward, very important there. 32 seconds, though, it'll have to be rewarded. In fact, the first set of wards are going to go down here in just a moment. Korok, except for this one right here. Nice ward placement on the side of NC State there. Top lane, Jakiro trying to pull here, but uh, of course, actually, Oxmox is getting the better of it. Haste Rune will be bottled up by the Storm Spirit, giving him some chance to regen real quick with those battle charges. Top lane, uh, Oxmox looks like he's going to get ganked here. We might see a, a Chaos Bolt Ice Path is going to barely miss anything, so that's going to be the end of that gank opportunity, unfortunately. Um, so, nice try there. I'm looking for Oxmox mid lane. A little damage going the way of Austin as well as Baron. He actually threw up his uh, static remnant, I believe, and his uh, overload doing a bit of damage as well. Ball lightning level 1 on Baron right now, so he's got that ganking ability, but... Uh, Meanwhile, Fina's actually might get initiated on here. There's not going to be Venomous Gale. It looks like there was a little bit of uh, miscommunication from Justin and Fear here. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Meanwhile, top lane, Oils, uh, not, no boots just yet, but of course he is that hard support. Korok does have his and falls on him. We're going to be looking for some ganks pretty soon once he does hit level 6, but that's going to be a ways away. He's only level 4 right now. There's the Iron Shell from Oxmox doing a bit of damage. No soul ring on him just yet, but I think it's flying out to him as we speak. Um, and it's actually boots instead, so maybe not. <laughs> All right, so everything going okay. Almost eight minutes in the game. Once it does hit eight minutes around, then I'll check the graphs here and see what's happening. But one one for one right now. Of course, first blood did go for um, GMU, but uh, they lost Korok to a tower, unfortunately. And nice job by Fear to pull there. Bottom lane, Bounty Hunter still looking for some last hits. He's still at 10 right now, so he had a good job a little bit uh, ago when he was against Sven Solo, but right now he's actually dropping off in, those, in terms of those last hits. Mid lane, Baron taking a lot of damage there. Excuse me, Strafe doing a nice job. Excuse me, Searing Arrow's doing a nice job. Hasn't popped Strafe yet. Has one point in that death pack. We'll see him go into the jungle. Probably get a large creeper and then look for some ganks and pretty soon. He's got his treads up. He's got his ring of a kill. So nice job there. 36 last hits as well. Sven's leading the way with the uh, 42 as we speak. Got treads. Got a bracer right now. Actually seeing a hearing and engagement from uh, Fiend. Actually just stealing one of the uh, centaur cons there. So nice job by that. Top lane. Still getting pressured by the Iron Shell. Korok doing a little bit of last hitting there. And the Iron Shield getting a last hits of their own. Trying to get some farm up. And then Jakiro with 854 gold with an Observer Ward on him. So, uh, Chaos Knight with actually the Intreds just to get so a little bit, a few more nukes to go. We'll switch to uh, Strength real quick. And we see Oxmox and uh, Falls looking for something that have to die the tower again if they really wanted it. Austin taking some damage here from a DD'd up Baron. Uh, with the Ring of Health, by the way, so it looks like it'll be a Perseverance early on. Whether or not that is something like a Lincoln's or something like a... Um, Bloodstone, I'm not sure, but we'll have to keep our eye on that. Fear looking for Fina. 
Do they have any vision is the question. They have dust here. Uh, Fiend is actually going to get Thunderstrike. He's looking for a glimpse here. No, not so. Not going to happen. All right, so some more aggression on Fina, but he's fine. He'll actually just back off, and he's okay. Meanwhile, mid lane, it looks like Oils is going to come for a gank, but actually in the top lane, Falls and Cork going to get the kill on Oxmox on the darks here. But I want to check mid here. We actually have three heroes converging onto Baron. He's actually going to back off to the tower here. There is uh, no rune. I think there's a ward here on the opposite side of the river to see Oils right now, but uh, so... Actually, Baron's going to go very far back, actually going to go to the tier 2 and maybe even back to base right now. So, they will they will stop that gank, and uh, Oils will back off to the top lane. And Korok and Falls have some room right now. 1,000 gold for the Chaos Knight. He's at 36 last hits. Klinks is at 40. Want to check the graph. It's 927. 2,000 experience going in the favor right now, GMU. How about gold? Only 750, so pretty even as we go along here in the early game, 9 minutes into the game. Austin... Getting up a Sage's Mask. Not sure what that's going to be. Actually, I think he's going to start his uh, Orc of Malevolence, as you can see. Sage's Mask does build into the Oblivion Staff. You only need the Robe of the Magi now and the uh, the Quarter Staff, which is actually a lot of money, obviously. But still, TP's coming in here to the bottom lane, looking for maybe an engagement onto Justin here. Rice, Rice, Rice is actually going to back off just for a minute as well. I don't know if they saw Oils. I don't know if they have Vision of him right now. They certainly don't. I think they did when they saw him TP into the Tower, though, or at least they must have heard. There is the Sentry Ward here, and they might see Oils uh, run right next to it. In fact, they do just barely, but actually going on Justin. Ice Path barely missing. He's going to run right back into it. There's going to be a gank from Korok as well as Falls. There's going to be a Stormhammer hitting on Falls right now, and uh, Justin will in fact go down. Rice, Rice, Rice in a bad position. There is going to be that Kinetic Field. Do they get the kill on Falls? They're pinging it out. Falls is taking a lot of damage. He's going to go right back, but he will indeed die. They're still chasing up in the top lane, trying to heal him. Meanwhile, down to the bottom lane. Storm Spirit's going to ball lighting in, going to go for the pull onto Oils. Oils going to go down with the Static Remnant. Storm Spirit getting that kill, not getting fear either. We're going to actually see uh, Fina back off there. So nice gank from GMU, but they actually lose one of their own during that engagement. Falls almost going down, though. Nice job to get him back out there with Korok, uh, and we saw that uh, Oxbox was actually looking for the heal, but unable to get it, so Falls is going to head back home, he's going to get some regen real quick, and Oils will respawn, so nice gank, looking at the graph once more, 3,000 going for experience, we're looking about 1,500 for gold right now, so good gank from GNU, leading the way early on, pretty important stuff, Austin going to right click, uh, Rice, Rice, Rice in the middle, not Baron here as well, he's got to be careful too here, could mean a certain death of him, we will see Morbid Mask on this fence, so it will be an early Mask of Madness, that's going to be very important, or Helm of the Dominator, but probably Mask of Madness, of course you can stack the Angel Creeps with that Helm of the Dominator, use your cleave, which is maybe why he's getting one point into it early on. No points in a war cry, surpri surprising, which is a very, very, very strong um, ability with your team, of course, giving you that increased armor, giving you the increased speed as well. Top lane's being uh, pressured a little bit by these Iron Shield creeps uh, with Oxmox here sitting, just waiting. He's only level 6 right now, his last hits are 19, so we're doing okay here, doing better than the Bounty Hunter, but of course the Bounty Hunter with ganking ability is going to give your team a little bit more of an advantage early on, so... But we will see actually a four-man gank coming down the way of Rice, Rice, Rice right now. Will they try to engage here is the question. Falls looking for a reality earth. We'll get it. Rice, Rice, Rice in a bit of trouble. There's the ice path plus the cast ball. Will be the kill. Bounty Hunter getting that one. There was a track on the man as well. And now Disruptor has to back off. Uh, and they will try to take the tower, I believe. So nice pressure coming from GMU early on. Good stuff there. So... Oils looking for a tower right now. Meanwhile, Chaos Knight actually going to get a kill with the uh, relocate here with the Wisp here in the, uh, in the top lane. So, Falls will back off. He's got his drums finished up. He's got his treads. Uh, looking for some more farm right now. How about Clink's house is farm going is the question. Quarterstaff on his uh, stash right now. Just needs the herb with a magi to finish up the first Oblivion. And then they'll try to push the tower here a little bit. How's the farm for the Sven for Baron? Baron does have that Perseverance finished up. No boots just yet. Actually, no Tier 2 boots, I meant. And still the Mask of Man is trying to work its way there for Rice, Rice, Rice. And that's going to be a lot of damage, uh, especially with God Strength as well. So we'll see what happens. Rotation coming in from Oils right now. He'll try to defend this just a little bit. Nice, uh, a lot of wards placed here on the river. You can see them all over the place. Meanwhile, middle lane, Justin's actually going to go down from a gank from Clinks. We actually see another uh, gank here. Uh, a lot of damage from those Searing Arrows from Austin. So 8-2 to two is the score. GMU playing really well right now. Looking to take this tower, it looks like. Uh, no problem. Someone said Golem15 is his favorite player in chat. Why? 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 Stop trolling. Korok has his arcane boots right now. Tier 1 tower. Taking a little bit of damage right now. Nothing going on though. Actually going to see rotation from Fina down bottom. Maybe looking for a kill on Rice vs. Nice. I think he can't get a solo kill though. 
Uh, I think it would be very difficult. He's got a lot of Janata damage, not enough Shrewkin, of course, the Shadow Walk as well. So pretty standard leveling there for uh, the Bounty Hunter in terms of that. And they're going to go with the kill here. Nice relocate with the Riot Rift. There's the Chaos Bolt. And, in fact, Vina getting the kill there. So that's what I was talking about. You need more there just besides the Bounty Hunter. And they bring in Falls and Korok real quick, and that's it. And that, like, that's going to be the kill. Absolutely. There's too much damage for Sven to try to get out of. And they're picking out Falls right now. Looks like they might want to go here. Looking for... Baron's going to look for a pull here in just a second. Justin is coming. And there is going to be the Ball Lightning. Pull will come in. There's going to be the Static Remnant as well. Will be enough damage. No. The pull is just not long enough. There's going to be a Riata Rift. And now Chaos Bolt. Three seconds on Baron. There's the Kinetic Field. Oh, the Glimpse, though. Take him out of it. So Falls is going to say thank you very much and back right off. And uh, he's actually going for Helm of the Iron Will, which means he will have an armlet in relative short order. Nice plays from the Chaos Knight. Unfortunate play from Justin there. Glimpsing him out of the Kinetic Field. He had landed the Kinetic Field perfectly. He didn't use that Glimpse. He'd probably stay there and maybe even get the kill. But some, that's not what happened. Now, Thunderstrike onto Falls. Taking a bit of damage. Of course, I think that's still only level 1. It's not doing nearly enough damage for it to be any other level than that. In fact, it is. Uh, so... Austin's still in the middle lane, still farming. 72 last hits for him. Let's check out the net worth right now. 5,000 going the way of Clinks. 5,004 of uh, the Chaos Knight. Couldn't think of the name real quick. Bounty Hunter for uh, 4,500. Sven is actually at 4,100. So all of the carries looking very strong for the side of GMU. Uh, and they look like they have a pretty good lead here, looking at the levels as well. Uh, not so much in levels, but that's fine. Clinks is level 11. Jakira level 6. Uh, so everything's still pretty even as far as experience goes, except for Clinks being level 11. Uh, they do have that 5,000, 6,000 uh, experience lead here. And actually going to see a kill from Jakiro here uh, on the bottom lane. Disruptor will go down. There's going to be an ice path as well with the Chaos Bolt. And Falls will get the kill. And that's going to help him get an arm lead even quicker. So uh, scary stuff there. And they're going to probably look to pressure tower soon. Dive actually happening here. Not dive. The tower went down mid lane. There's going to be initiation coming. There's going to be some strength as well. Strong hammer onto Fina right now, but a lot of damage coming into the Searing Arrows. Sear 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 There's the Shuriken. God's strength is popping rice, rice, rice. He's trying to get away, but it looks like Strafe will get the kill there with Blinks. The Searing Arrows doing the job. TP rotation from NCSU right now, but meanwhile, the bottom lane is getting pressured and will go down. So they'll be able to push while those rotations do come in. Nice place from George Mason. 12 to 2 is the score. And everything going well on the side of George Mason right now. TP coming in. They want to go on to Clinks right now. They're pinging on him real quick. Uh, he will back off just for the moment. Uh, bottom lane is still here. There's going to be a relocate. Where is it going to be, though? It looks like it will be the mid lane. They're going to go right on top of the Venomancer. Oxmox is actually in a bad position. He's going to get stunned up from the uh, Wisp there. And there's going to be a Riata. Baron will come in with the pull. Kinetic Field will fly up. Not going to hit, though. Baron trying to get out of there. Austin taking a lot of damage. Static Storm will, in fact, miss. Justin will go down as well. Uh, Fina getting the kill on the backside, missed it there. Meanwhile, Austin, where did the uh, Sorcerer go? He actually ball lighting uh, over under the top. And meanwhile, Jakiro going to get the kill here down into the river. And those are illusions. That's what I was looking at. And Rice, Rice, Rice with the Mask of Madness finished. That's pretty important. That's going to be a lot of damage there. But, of course, only one point to the Warcry right now. Full Storm Hammer. But uh, needs that bonus armor. And it's going to get up pretty soon, I think. Right now, looking for this uh, tier 2 tower, and they should be able to take it. There's the reality Rift plus the Chaos Bolt on Fear, taking too much damage. We'll go down. He'll pop his uh, Poison Nova real quick, but that's not going to do too much. Uh, right now, Rice, Rice, Rice trying to look to take this, but Phantasm is popped. They want to go. They want to keep pushing here. They might be able to get a tier 3 as well. Rice, Rice, Rice going to try to defend this. There's going to be the Kinetic Field. Nice one, in fact. Ice Path will land up, and there's going to be Mike Macro Power as well. Rice, Rice, Rice just taking too much damage. Here comes Baron, trying to ball lightning in. There's going to be a kill for the Chaos Knight onto the Sven, and he'll get another one onto the Storm Spirit. There's a double kill as well. Paul's taking a lot of damage. Pretty low health right now, but he will be healed up in just a moment from Korok. And Falls will have to back off here. Meanwhile, they're still chasing Oxbox Mox. The reality rift will get the kill. Actually, Flink's right clicking him down. So, nice job there by GMU. Getting the kill. They'll rotate back. They're going to look to actually relocate back to base real quick and uh, heal up. And then maybe look to go back to uh, pushing here in the mid lane. They can do so. All right, so once again, this is George Mason University versus North Carolina State University. Game number one of a best of three series. It's 22 right now. I'm Mott. Thanks for joining us. You can find me on my Twitch and Twitter account, which you can find up here somewhere uh, with the overlay, of course. 
And Rice 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 is trying to get some more farm right now. He's only level 8, so he's a little far behind. He's got that Mask of Madness, which is nice. But you see the levels here on the side of the uh, Dire here on GMU. They've also got a lot of net worth in comparison to what the Sven has. 8,000 on the Chaos Net right now. In fact, they're going to head top. And Blink's looking for a solo kill on Disruptor. We'll find it with his straight from Searing Arrows. Stormhammer will fly. Do they have any dust? In fact, they do. They do dust Austin. Awesome. This could be the end of him. They need another stun here. Vacuum going to bring him back just for a second. Stormhammer off cooldown in 7. Doesn't have enough mana for it, though. Surge onto Rice, Rice, Rice. Still chasing Austin. The dust will wear off in just a minute. And in fact, there it goes. So Austin does uh, get out of there just fine with that solo kill. Nice play there. He has his Orchid finished up, by the way. Falls with his armlet as well. The main core items here for the side of GMU are finished up. They've pushed the tier 2 already. They're in the commanding driving seat of this game. And I don't know if there's much that NCSU can do to stop this push here. So, I mean, what do you guys think about the, the skill build here for the Sven? He went for the Stormhammer first with a point and cleave and then put one into Warcry and got strength. Uh, I think I would rather see the three cleave not leveled and then just sort of max out Warcry and Stormhammer. And, of course, get the guy strength at level 6 always. And, of course, Warcry is such a strong item. I think that could help him early on. Give me your thoughts on that in chat, please. Tower being pressured here just a little bit. Iron Shell will push uh, back into your cave, though. Meanwhile, mid lane. Pina is uh, trying to farm a little bit. Meanwhile, we're actually going to see a ball lightning here on the side of Baron. And there's going to be a nice vacuum. Stormhammer on it, too. Ball is taking a lot of damage. Korok taking in some as well. There's going to be a kill, though, right onto Fear. He takes too much damage. Justin going to go down as well. Here comes Clinks on the backside looking for more kills. Has a double. So uh, they actually get the relocate from the side of GMU. I didn't know what happened to them. I thought they died, but they're just fine. Nice play by Korok. They're going to come right back in, look for more kills. There's a Stormhammer going to save right for his life. There's a Riot Rift onto Oxmox. He's going to go down. Falls is God, like, looking for another kill. There's the Cast Bolt. Long range. Fiona going to get it as well. And, oh, so much damage there. Nice play from Korok to bring Falls back home. And let's heal up real quick and go back and gank. And that's exactly what they did. Excellent play. 4,000 gold on the side of Falls. And, I mean, everybody's looking really strong here on the side of GMU. They're going to take this no problem. 25-2 to 2 is the score. And, man, hopefully we get a better game the second time around. But uh, GMU just too strong right now. Or Team Oils, if you will call them. Oils is actually pushing the bottom lane right now. Ball ending will happen down to him. He looks like he probably will go down. There's not much they can do there. Uh, stop this kill. So Oils will go down, I believe. He's still trying to pressure the uh, tier. He'll get the kill on the tower before he dies. That's really what he wanted. And meanwhile, the tier 3 up top being pressured, and this will be the tier 3 kill. Looking for the racks as well. They're not afraid to fight this. It's 25 to 3 is the score. Looking for more. There's the Reality Rift. There's going to be a Stormhammer as well. Stormhammer hitting onto Falls. Uh, the Cast Ball doing some damage on Oxmox. A lot of damage there. Static Storm is up. Doing some damage. Nothing really going on there. Rice, Rice, Rice trying to get some kills onto Falls. There's the uh, management of the armlet there. Baron's going to come and go for the pull right now. They're going to try to turn on Baron. Falls will go down finally. Is the question? No, not yet. Somehow still living. Clinks with the Searing Arrows on the backside, getting a double kill. And Falls is unkillable right now, unbelievably so. And now they're going to take the racks here. And this should be GG, no problem. Good game. GMU just playing out of their minds right now. Absolutely crazy. GG is called out from NCSU. Really great plays. And we'll get into game two in just a second, guys. So hold tight. Thanks for joining us. Well, remember, this is the CDL. It's a best of three series between North Carolina State University and George Mason University. The Edge just finished up my clinks, by the way. Looks like the final score will in fact be 29 to 3. And uh, we'll get into the next game for you in just a second.